999 what's the emergency? I've just spotted someone with a gun and he pointed it in my direction. Please wait a moment, I am connecting you to the police. Come on, admit it guys, that does look like a real gun, doesn't it? Unbelievable. Right, welcome back to UK Highland Photography. As usual, I'm Strober, and today we're going to be talking about police fee photographers. Now, this is mainly to do with street photography again. Now, in the United Kingdom, there's a thing called the Terrorism Act 2000. And the Terrorism Act 2000 is notorious with photographers. And the reason being is that a lot of the police officers use the Terrorism Act 2000 against photographers. I actually believe that Section 42 of the Terrorism Act no longer exists because photographers threw up that much of an uproar of the abuse of this act against photographers so the aim of this video is to talk about you know what the terrorism act 2000 is with regards to uh, photography and what powers it is that the police have with regards to us photographers so if you want to go get yourself a cup of coffee a cup of tea go do it now pause the video and come back Right, ready, let's begin. Perfect, let's move on. So here we go, I've got my notes here and this is straight from the police website, okay? And it says here, the members of the public and the media do not need a permit to film or photograph in public places and police have no power to stop them filming or photographing incidents or police personnel. So basically, if a fire breaks out in Manchester, I can go there, stand in the public space and take photographs of fire brigade men, police officers, members of the public, fire trucks, victims of the fire, etc. And nobody can do anything about it. That's what that means. And that's our freedom. However, right, however, there's a thing called Section 43 of the Terrorism Act. And it's... Uh, Basically, officers have the power to stop and search a person who they reasonably suspect to be a terrorist. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Officers have the power to stop and search a person who they reasonably suspect to be a terrorist. Now, this is why there was an uproar about the Terrorism Act. It's because police officers was using this against photographers. Now, what does that mean? They must reasonably suspect you to be a terrorist. What does that mean? Basically, it means that the police must believe you are a terrorist. And you're not a terrorist, you're a photographer. And this was, this is why a group called uh, amateur photographer not a terrorist formed because of all this so let's have a look at what reasonable reasons are to suspect you are a terrorist right basically if a police officer says that you have got your camera on a tripod and that's why he wants to search you no that's not reasonable that is not reasonable whatsoever that's actually being stupid if a police officer said, sorry, police officer said to you, he was going to search you because you've got a big lens on your camera, let's say, I don't know, a 500 millimeter lens, then that's not reasonable either. You know, again, that's just being absolutely stupid. Just because you look professional does not mean you are a terrorist. Okay, so there are reasons where police officers cannot use the Terrorism Act against us photographers. But let's have a look at scenarios, reasons where they possibly could use the Terrorism Act against us photographers. So 
You've all seen the video at the beginning where the member of the public phones up the police and says he spotted someone who he thinks is carrying a firearm and he's running around aiming it at people. So the police, once they hear something, you know, on the telephone with regards to guns, the police automatically have to respond. In the United Kingdom, they take it so serious when it involves firearms. So if you're camera was mistakenly believed to be a gun by a member of the public then you know it is quite possibly possible that you're going to attract the police and they are going to search you so that to me would be very reasonable indeed you know if somebody says look that photographer over there he's got a gun the police come they want to search me that's reasonable grounds you know to search me that could very well fall into you know section 43 of the terrorism act so there's the reasons so the next one would be something like uh let's say like taking the photograph of a police officer during an english defense league demonstration right that's not terrorism that that's called journalism that's called photo journalism so you can't get in trouble because you took a photograph of a police officer that was holding back a bunch of EDL supporters. Right? You can't get in trouble for that. However, let's say you are photographing a police officer in a different way. Let me explain this. Let's say the police officer gets up out of his bed at half past six every morning and he goes downstairs into the kitchen to make a cup of coffee and you're sat outside and you take a photograph of, a photograph of him in his kitchen making a cup of coffee. Now, let's say later on in the morning, you photograph the police officer leaving his house and getting into his car. Then you take another photograph when he arrives at his children's school in order to drop his kid off at school you photograph him and his kid and then when the police officer drives off and he goes to the mcdonald's drive through you take a photograph of the police officer then you see where i'm going with this one guys and then once he arrives at work at the police station you take another photograph of him then what does that sound like to use guys I know what the sounds like to me. It sounds like reconnaissance. So under the Terrorism Act 2000, the police have every right to stop and search you under Section 43 of the Terrorism Act. So if that was the case and you were stopped and searched, then what are the powers that the police have? Basically, the police are allowed to have a look at your photographs and if, if you've been stopped under section 43 of the terrorism act the police yes they can have a look at your photographs yes the police if they deemed necessary they can confiscate your camera they can confiscate your memory card and they can confiscate your mobile phone or anything else they think may relate to basically to terrorism so the police are allowed to do that however the police are not allowed to delete photographs again police are not allowed to delete photographs however if the court examines the material presented to them the court may say we want that material deleted and then the police are legally, by law, allowed to erase everything on your memory card, on your camera, on your smartphone, etc. So basically, guys, that is Section 43 of the Terrorism Act. 